If you're looking to create a 3D effect like this for your content, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you go about creating this effect using the artificial camera in DaVinci Resolve, showing you the tips and tricks that I use and having a little bit of fun along the way as well. And my computer is struggling. Uh... My name's Dan, you're watching Dan Vinci, and let's start editing. Right, so we're in the edit page now. I have here a just a generic screen recording from my last video that we're gonna be using for this. Obviously, this is going to be entirely in Fusion, so the only step really that you need to do outside of Fusion is set the required length that you want for your clip. All right, I'm happy. My clip is five seconds. Let's jump into Fusion. It wasn't very long, was it? Okay, so we're in the Fusion page now on our selected clip, and you may have a tree that looks a little bit something like this. Now, don't panic if it looks a little bit different because we're gonna change it all anyway, so it doesn't really matter how it comes out. So we have our media one, which is our actual clip and our media out which is just the clip output so let's just disconnect this for now i'm going to drag this up here and i'm going to create a background node which is this icon right here background one and i'm going to drag the output and i'm going to just attach it and basically what i'm doing here is creating a canvas so in the inspector over here i'm just going to bring the alpha all the way down so it's transparent so we have our canvas this is what we're going to create our stuff onto okay so now what we want to do is click on media one and we want to click control space and search image plane yes so we want to click add and if you had media one selected it should just add it on like so if it doesn't just attach it with the output onto the green triangle if we click one on image plane we'll be able to preview this in a 3d space so already we're diving into the 3d aspects of this tutorial you may panic because you might not understand how to move around it's very similar to things like blender obviously the controls are a little bit different but if you've used blender in the past you'll get the gist of this if you click down on your scroll wheel it should be able to move you you know sort of on the x and y axis if you hold alt and then click down on the scroll wheel it'll change to a rotational value so you can just sort of move around in the image space and you can see that screen recording looks very nice very clean that is clean now how do we get these nodes here to these nodes here you may find if you try and attach this it ain't working well there's a solution what we want to do is click on the image plane, control space and search renderer 3D. This basically is a conversion node that just converts your 3D image into a 2D image intelligence. So if we get the output of renderer 3D, drag it down to background one. So you may find now that you've done this, your screen recording or whatever you're you know, adding this effect to looks very far away and lonely. Father hell! We can simply change this as well. If we go to the image plane here, just click on it again, click control space and search camera. We want camera 3D. Now there's loads of different camera effects and cameras. You want to click camera 3D. That's what you want. So click add and this should add it in through a merge layer and you may notice your image has gone away. Don't panic. Now I'm panicking. So if you click one on your merge 3D you will also see the camera in your preview. So clicking on your camera let's just drag this out by zooming in. So if you scroll without clicking it should zoom in and then if you just click the blue arrow out there you go you will see our image like so there we go as easy as that we've already created a camera in a 3d plane now obviously there's a lot more to this and we'll get into it but you can already see we don't have a great deal of nodes so it really doesn't take a great deal of time to set up so if we click on renderer 3d one and then we go into the inspector which is over here click on camera you'll see it says default go down to camera 3d one that just sets it so that you know the output is that render it doesn't really do much in a minute but it will come in handy later on when you're you know doing the focal points and all of that jazz you like jazz but dan how do I animate this? Well, it's rather simple, really. Yes, that is right. So what we want to do is click on camera 3D and over in the inspector, you'll see this little tab here called transform. Now here, this is where you want to be. This is the be all and end all of animating your camera. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. It's a way of controlling your camera in a really simple way. Very similar to a transform node, only with the third dimension. So let's go on the timeline, which is this little guy right here. There you go. And I'm going to go to the first keyframe just to keep things nice and simple. And I'm going to zoom the camera right the way in just like this. So my sub object is sort of in the middle of the frame that's fine for now so I'm just going to move this around like this just so I can get a better angle zoom it right the way in on our subject maybe just bring it up a bit using the green arrow like that there we go and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change the pivot point this is absolutely pivotal 
<laughs> to creating this really nice smooth rotational look that you see on screen right now. Without it, it's a nightmare to animate the camera. But yeah, we need to move the pivot point. To do so, in Spectre, you'll see another section here because we've just been moving the transitional values. We want to go down to the pivot one. And you'll see if we move this, you'll see the arrows are moving without the camera. The trick here is to move the pivot point onto the subject. So if you want the camera to stay locked on something and rotate around it easily, so you don't get confused when you're animating around, you just want to move the pivot point. There we go. So I'm quite happy with that pivot point. You can see it there. It's sort of somewhat in the middle, I think. Just move it around. Something like that. I'm happy with that. That pivot point is roughly in the middle of my subject. So let's move on. So staying on our camera node and staying in the inspector, now what we can do is just play around with the rotation and see what we like. Look at that. Already, the camera is staying fixed on our subject so much easier than just messing around trying to move the camera back and forth so look if i just move over here our subject it's perfect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to keyframe zero i'm happy with that perspective there so i'm then going to just create the keyframes like so then i'm going to go all the way over here to the last keyframe and then i'm going to move the camera around something like that there we go perfect easy as pie though i don't eat pie now comes some of the fun stuff operating the actual camera itself weirdly some of the camera controls are in the renderer node and this does sort of make sense but also doesn't let's go into the renderer node so click on this one then we want to go over to renderer type change this from software renderer down to hardware renderer this basically changes it so it uses the hardware to render i explain things really well so i'm going to just jump into the keyframes that i've created before i add the focal blur in the spline and i'm just going to make it nice and eased in and eased out like this. Something like this, just so it's nice and easy and smooth. So now with the shot, it should accelerate and then slow down, just like this that you see on screen. Okay, so now let's add that focal blur that you see all over the internet. So if you go into the top right corner in the inspector tab while clicking on renderer 3D, we wanna go over to controls and down here, you'll see a little section called accumulation effects. This is the one we want. So click this and watch your computer die like that. There's going to be some adjustments that we're going to need to make. What we want to do is bring down the amount of blur that we have. So it's just this little control here. So I'm going to bring it right the way down just so that we can start to see what we're actually looking at. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Something, something like that. Okay. And then we want to go back over to our camera node, then go back into the inspector and go on controls. And then what we want to do is mess around with our focal plane. Now this is very sensitive and my computer is struggling. <laughs> really struggling. So slow. As you can see, a lot of this is already in focus, but it's just not quite here. So what I'm going to do is just go back into the camera controls and change this to maybe 0.8, what that looks like. Uh, let's do 0.3, let's try that. There we go. So the magic number for me was 0.4. Now this will range depending on how far away your digital camera is from your subject. So you can actually move the camera itself using the transform controls to get something into focus as opposed to you know changing the focal plane itself. But now if we render this in place, we should get this really, really nice clean look. Now I do a lot of this kind of stuff at work and I have a much more powerful computer than I do here at home. Now my computer at home is still very good, but the one at work is exceptional. And this is going to take me 22 minutes. So good luck. You better be patient if you're wanting to make this effect. Unless you have a 5090, then I mean, it's you'll be fine. Now that's all I have time for in today's video. There is a lot more that you can do with the 3D camera. So if this does well and you guys like it in the comments, I'd love to show you some of the parallax techniques that I've used to create some really cool montage -y stuff. So yeah, experiment with this new skill that you've learned. If you're new around here, please do subscribe. I'm really looking forward to hitting 25,000 subscribers. It feels like literally the other day I hit 20,000. So thank you so much to all of the new thousands of people that have subscribed. I, I find it absolutely bonkers that there's that many of you behind this piece of glass that I stare at. So yeah. My name's Dan, you watch Dan Vinci, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!